The battle cry in San Antonio was, remember the Alamo. But now a new fight is brewing between the Texians and the government. And it's become, remember the DPE. Now on Taking Off. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken, and today's aviation news is about the termination of a popular DPE from the FAA San Antonio Flight Standards District Office, or FISDO. As always on these rants at the end, I will put some things out there that can make us better pilots and better people. Okay, what in the world is a DPE or a designated pilot examiner? For you non-pilots out there, a DPE is an examiner who passes or fails you for your different pilot certificates. So when it comes time to get that certificate, you schedule a check ride with a DPE or someone from the FAA. In the United States, the FAA is the designated entity that regulates and controls the airspace over our country. They decide who gets a certificate and who doesn't. In the old days, when it was time to go for your check ride to get your certificate, you would schedule a flight with an examiner from the FAA, and this created a backlog. So the FAA created a program where they would designate certain upstanding and knowledgeable instructors to be able to pass or fail pilots. So these designated examiners are not employees of the FAA and they can lose their designation without cause. And the FAA has regional offices all over the country to help facilitate all this. In the aviation community, we call these offices the FISDO, the Flight Standards District Office. At each FISDO, you have a manager who is in charge of that whole office. Reporting directly to the manager is a managing specialist of DPEs. In the San Antonio FISDO, right now, there are 11 designated pilot examiners and one managing specialist. In other FISDOs, you might have more than one managing specialist and a different number of DPEs. And I know many managing specialists actually have a lot of other duties inside the FISDO as well. An individual is appointed to be a DPE by the managing specialist and serves at the whim and pleasure of that specialist. If a managing specialist doesn't like the color shirt the DPE is wearing, he can terminate the airman from the program. If the managing specialist wants a buddy to be a DPE, he can terminate one for no reason to make room. That's the way the system exists right now. And that's the quick rundown on the FISDO DPE program. Okay, let's talk about a fight brewing in Central Texas between the aviation community and the local FISDO. In this battle, I don't know either side. I've never met or talked to the guys at the FISDO office in San Antonio, and I've never met or talked to the terminated DPE before this event. I don't have a dog in the hunt. I do know some of the supporting players, but we're going to be talking about two different sides that are now in a battle, especially as lawyers are getting involved. I want to make sure everyone understands I'm not against the FAA. Where at all possible, I've tried to get an objective story from each side. I have friends at the FAA, certainly Brian Turner does. The actions of one or two people in the FAA, of course, do not represent the entity as a whole. There are plenty of good people in the FAA. Okay, so here's the two sides drawn for battle. On one side, you have the San Antonio FISDO, specifically the managing specialist, Mr. Christian Morales, and his boss, FISDO manager, Michael Carroll. Both Mr. Morales and Mr. Carroll have been in their positions for a relatively short time, like a year to 14 months or so. On the other side, you have Ken Wiedekin, an extremely accomplished pilot, instructor, and now former DPE. He's well liked, and by all reports, a great instructor and a fair examiner. The supporting characters in this story include All American Aviation and Jeremy Walters, who facilitated a virtual safety program inside the FAA Wings program. There's Trace Clinton, who was the main speaker at that virtual program, and Ryan Newman, a San Antonio FISDO employee, also attending the virtual conference. Uh, I'll put links and stuff for the virtual conference right down there in the description. 
Ryan's job at the FISDO is the FAST program manager. That's the safety initiative program that works with people like Jeremy to get seminars and info out there on safety. It's important to note, as a testament to the character of Ken, the Central Texas aviation community has rallied heavily around Ken. More on that later. In the meantime, if you have a Ken Wiedekind story, post it for me in the comments below. I'd love to read it. So what happened? Imagine that you've become a designated examiner for the FAA. You still have your own life as an instructor or something else, airline pilot, an aviation-related business. You get invited to sit in the audience of a safety meeting that is paneled by a couple of people that you happen to know and like. So you go and you sit in the audience. They laugh, they joke, and toward the end of it, they tell stories, including one story about you. Remember, you're in the audience. Can you just stand up and interrupt the panel and tell them the FAA frowns upon such activity? You could, but maybe it's not really the time or place. So basically, in a virtual setting, that's what happened to Ken. He was attending a safety seminar on flying low. At the end, the presenter, Trace Clinton, recounted a story of skiing, that's uh, taking a plane over water and just letting the tires barely touch skiing with Ken's plane and without Ken knowing it. Here's the clip, courtesy of All American Aviation and Jeremy Walters. Jason Giles, have you cub skied before? And I got a great story with this one since Ken's online. Uh, oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, so me and another pilot, I won't disclose, uh, we, we did, we ran the Ken's airplane tires on the water and when we got back, I told Ken, I said, you know, hey, we, we went and skied the tires. It was awesome. Um, and he goes, you know how you do that, right? And I was thinking, you know, he has a mustache and he has some gray hair to give him experience. And I was thinking I was going to get more insight on how to do this safely and fun. And he goes, in someone else's airplane. And so <laughs> from then on, <laughs> no more skiing. So, uh when Ken was terminated, he was told by managing specialist Christian Morales that the reason for his termination was because he didn't stand up and renounce this practice. The second reason he was given for termination was that earlier in the program, he took a sip from a glass that looks like it possibly had wine in it. And this is what was reported to Ken as the cause for termination. I've reached out to the FAA, specifically Mr. Morales, for clarification and validation. As of this filming, I've not heard back from Mr. Morales. The FAA's public affairs liaison, Lynn Lunsford, told me this morning that it's being looked into. That's the extent of what I've been able to find out from the FAA's side. Okay, the timeline for this whole thing went down like this. In June, one evening, they had a fast safety seminar. In early September, while out on a check ride for a CFI candidate, Ken's access to the, the DPE management system was pulled. And he got an email from Mr. Morales right at that time that his DPE credentials were suspended pending an investigation. According to Ken, Mr. Morales informed Ken he was not the target of the investigation and that the investigation was being done outside of the FISO office. Ken asked what was this about and was informed by Mr. Morales that it had to do with the video at a fast safety event. He was not told really anything else. A couple of weeks went by and Ken reached back out to them and was told by Mr. Morales that the investigation was still going on and that again, he wasn't the target. More weeks went by and finally at the beginning of November, the FISDO sent a notice of termination through the DPE management software system to Ken. He was no longer a DPE. We do not know who was the actual target of the investigation, Ryan Newman, the FAST program director and a real employee of the FAA, was in attendance as well and is still working at the FAA. We don't know if he received any discipline from Mr. Morales or Mr. Carroll. And to be clear, on the face of the evidence presented, I don't believe there's any reason for any discipline here. Okay, last month I had a video which I talked about the reasonable person test. That is, most of us are reasonable people. When an individual acts in an unreasonable manner, there's usually something in their mind that makes that action reasonable. So that's my question here, because on the face of it, pending some information that we haven't gotten from the FAA, 
it appears to be fairly unreasonable course of action. So what was it that made it reasonable in Mr. Morales and Mr. Carroll's mind to terminate Ken over something like this? I've asked the FAA, but no answer yet. And I'll share it with you when the answer comes, if the answer comes. We know Mr. Morales is well within his rights to take the action he did, but that doesn't mean it's right to do that thing. And there could be other reasons that they that aren't stated. Like maybe Ken mucked up the DMS software system, causing the FISDO a lot of work, or something like that that we don't know about. Of course, if there's any other reason, I hope they communicate what it is. Because otherwise, we only have the two points that they told Ken to go on. That he didn't speak up as an audience member on the dangers of skiing an airplane and drinking from a glass. Okay, the aviation community has rallied around Ken. On the face of an extremely unfair termination and a DP system that is arbitrary and capricious, pilots and aviation people are asking and demanding some changes. They've created a Facebook group called Pilots for Ken. And among their stated goals are to get Ken reinstated and a Bill of Rights like the Pilot Bill of Rights for DPEs. Uh, they've been gathering a lot of signatures for a petition for Ken's reinstatement, but it's a, an extremely hard battle. The FISDO in this situation is like a castle with a moat and no way in. And again, they were well within their rights to take the action they did, even if their rights aren't right. So it may come down to everyone just reaching out to their legislators and try to get some movement on the FAA about this issue. While the primary effort from Ken in the aviation community is to get Ken reinstated, which is an extremely rare occurrence, Ken has a second goal he'd like to see out of this whole thing, and that is an accountability system to be put in place for the DPE management. And right now, there is no accountability. If a managing specialist at the FISDO wants to give his buddy a nice job, the managing specialist can simply fire a DPE, creating a vac vacancy that he could then fill with his buddy. Yes, it's cronyism, but it's totally allowable and unchecked right now in the current system. So again, maybe it's time to reach out to the legislators. One key byproduct of this action by Mr. Morales is how it will affect aviation safety. There are programs all over the country focused and dedicated on safety. DPEs and other people in official positions offer some of the best wisdom on aviation safety. Now I fear they'll be reluctant to risk their careers to help out the aviation community. YouTube, Facebook, social media, it's a great place to promote safe flying. And now that's in jeopardy. You know, here's my takeaway, which might be a little different. It's never too late to do the right thing, to make the right choice. There have been times that I've headed down the wrong trail, sometimes years down that road. This can serve as a personal reminder to myself and maybe you, it's not too late to make the right call. When you're flying and you've made a series of bad decisions, stop, take a breath, and make the right call. In your relationship with your spouse, maybe you've been heading down that wrong road. It's not too late to stop and make the right call. No matter how hard, now of course many times, to make the right call requires humility. I was uh, directing a TV show last year and we were on location in another city and it was hard keeping the cast focused and together. I was ready to roll on a couple of the actors and they were nowhere to be found. Eventually they came sauntering up and I was livid. I pulled the two of them aside and just lit into them for going off without permission. And then one of them simply told me that I had earlier said that the actors could go grab footage and that they could take a cameraman with them, and that's what they did. They were shooting some shenanigans for the show. At that moment, I could try to save face and defend my anger and tell them, well, don't do it again, blah, blah, blah. But why save face? I was 100% totally wrong for yelling at them. And I immediately reversed course and apologized and told them I was totally wrong for getting in their face. I was ashamed, I was humiliated. It was well within my rights as the TV director to just tell them to sit down and shut up. But it wasn't the right thing to do. Maybe we need 
less clinging to rights and more clinging to the right choice. So I ask the San Antonio Fisto, specifically Mr. Morales, you have every right in the current system to terminate any DPE without any cause. But sometimes just because you can do it doesn't make it the right thing. We see that when we're flying as pilots. Barring information I don't have for a justifiable reason for your action, it's not too late to do the right thing for Ken, for the aviation community, for the safety programs that will be hurt. Do the right thing. And you others out there, whatever it is in your life right now, you can do the right thing. And remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills. Stay safe.